This is Duke University. <laughs> Uh, thanks for coming out. I'm Jamie. I'm with the Duke DC board. Um, I represent the Fuqua constituency. So shout out to all the Fuqua grads. I hope they get a chance to talk to you. And I'm going to really quickly introduce our speaker. Um, it's Debbie Stone. She's a Duke alum and a Duke parent. Uh, she's an executive coach and trainer with Novator. And she is going to teach us the art of effective self-promotion tonight. So if you can help me welcome her with a round of applause. Everybody, I hopefully everybody can hear me. Can you all hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. So the first thing that people usually want to know about me when they meet me is how I ended up doing what I do for a living. And it actually all started in the fourth grade. I was cast to play Annie in our school play <laughs> Annie and Gun. It's a very exciting opportunity for me until I found out that the person who played Annie had to sing a solo in front of the whole school. I can't carry a tune. So sadly for me, my musical theater career reached a dead end at age nine, but I did discover that I enjoyed being on stage. I took a fairly drastic detour. I went to Duke and did my undergraduate work in public policy and then worked at Bain and Company for a couple of years. From there, I came back to Duke and went to law school and started what became a 16-year legal career. I worked at a large law firm, McKenna Long and Aldridge, and then had my own practice for a number of years, and found that I really enjoyed client development, I enjoyed networking, relationship building, but I felt like something was always missing for me. In 2001, I got lucky and I found my true calling. I was out doing some networking to build my law practice, and I met some people who called themselves coaches. I was very intrigued by what they did and how they helped their clients become more successful. And in 2002, I changed careers. I founded my company, Novator Partners. I hired a coach for myself, and I went through coach training and certification. So for the last almost 12 years now, I have worked with individuals and groups of people. I've worked with subjects such as leadership, self-promotion, management, uh, communication skills, professional presence, and I've had the opportunity to really help people get to their professional and personal goals more quickly and easily than they otherwise would. And I discovered a way through training to get myself back on stage without ever having to sing another solo. <laughs> so what did you all notice about what I just did? Anybody? What'd you notice? Self yes. Self-promoting. I was self-promoting, exactly. I couldn't have planned to do better. <laughs> so I was self-promoting. And self-promotion really is all about telling your story in an authentic way. Telling a story with your own personality, your own passion, your own interests, your own sense of humor, and keeping an audience interested. So that's what we're here to talk about today. And I have two main objectives for the evening. The first is to change how you think about self-promotion. I am going to make the assumption that most of you have a relatively negative view overall about self-promotion. I've been talking about the subject for a while and I find that true. I don't know what's going on with my mic. I'll move it a little bit and see if that helps. The, so I'm going to change your mindset, change your way of thinking about self-promotion a little bit. The second thing is, I want to provide you with some tools so that you can become a more effective self-promoter. Self-promotion is important. Clearly, you all think it has some importance because you're here. So I want to give you some tools so that you can begin to do it more effectively. So when I say self-promotion, again, I'm going to bet that most of you are thinking something that's not necessarily entirely positive. We've all had experiences with self-promotion and self-promoters. Many of those experiences have not been entirely positive. We all know that person that when they walk into the room, we kind of cringe because they're that obnoxious, over-the-top, bragging person that no one can stand. They are great at everything. 
They're always the best at everything. They want to tell you how good they are at everything. And none of us want to be that person. So we shy away from self-promotion. And we keep ourselves from being as effective as we can be. So given that, I want to talk a little bit about those mindsets that we hold. And mindsets are really nothing more than the assumptions and beliefs that we hold that shape the actions that we think are possible. So if we hold negative beliefs about self-promotion, it's very likely that it holds us back from doing the self-promotion that would help us in our lives and in our careers. So when we talk about mindsets, I want you to be thinking about what mindset you currently hold about self-promotion. This is going to drive me crazy. <laughs> I'm going to try it without the mic for a minute. Okay, can everybody hear me without the mic? Yes. Beautiful. That's going to make life a lot easier if I can get unhooked from this. Give me a moment. I will not address myself. Okay. All right, we're good to go. So, so we have these mindsets, and a lot of times they operate in the background. We don't even know that we have a negative mindset operating. And it's far more difficult to overcome a mindset if we're not conscious of it. So I want to acquaint you with some of the most widely held <coughs> beliefs or mindsets that people have about self-promotion. So you can start to think whether one of those might be something that's holding you back or a mindset that you currently hold. There's a great book about self-promotion. It's called Brag, The Art of Tooting Your Own Horn Without Blowing It by Peggy Klaus. Have any of you read that book? Great book. I highly recommend it. It's noted in your handouts on the last page. And one of the things that Peggy does very, very well in her book is she talks about some of these mindsets that people hold around self-promotion. And I'm going to run through a few very quickly for you. And again, be thinking about, as you hear them, is this something I think about self-promotion myself? So the first is this idea that a job well done speaks for itself. I wish this were true. <laughs> Life would be so much easier, wouldn't it, if things were just fair. We do a great job, and we're justly rewarded for it. But unfortunately, that's not the case. And increasingly, as we find in the workplace, the person who's your manager or your boss today may not be your manager or your boss tomorrow. The job that you want to have, they don't know who you are. They don't know what you've done. And people are inundated with information. So we can't assume that by simply doing a good job that we will get the recognition and the rewards that are just. So we can't rely on the idea that a job well done speaks for itself even though that may be a mindset that you're holding currently. The second mindset that people often buy into is the idea that I need to self-promote, but I only need to do it at a performance review. There are times and places that are prescribed for me to promote myself, and I'll do it, but I'll only do it when I'm supposed to. Absolutely. In your performance review or in a setting where you're supposed to promote yourself, you darn well better be ready to do it. I've had clients who have been ill-prepared to do it. They have had their performance review and have not spent the time being ready. But you want to be ready any time to promote yourself, anywhere. You never know who's listening. You never know who you might be encountering next, sitting next to you on an airplane. I've had that experience myself where somebody I was sitting next to on a flight started a conversation with me. It was a late night flight. I had no idea that this person might be a prospective client, that it was an opportunity to self-promote. So we want to be ready anytime and all the time and not simply think about self-promotion as something that we do at a performance review time. The third mindset that people often buy into is this idea that humility will get you noticed. And it might. But what will it get you noticed for? Being humble. <laughs> now, I have nothing against being humble. I think humility is a, is a wonderful character trait. And it's important because humility is what will keep all of us from becoming that obnoxious, over-the-top, braggart person that we don't want to be. It's the balance. 
However, I can guarantee you that the person who gets the plum project that you want, the promotion that you want, the job that you want, or the client that you want is not the person who scores the highest on the humility scale. There are very few jobs and careers where humility is the number one character trait that is being looked for. So important to have it, use it as a balance, but humility is not what is going to get you noticed in the way you want to be noticed in your career. The next thing that people often buy into is this idea that other people will sell, will promote me for me and I don't have to do it myself. People will talk about how great I am. My boss will talk me up. Clients that I have now will talk me up. I don't have to do it. Again, this is another one where I sit back and I think, gosh, you know, if only that were true. We could all just sit back with our feet up and do a great job and other people would talk about how great we are and we'd be justly rewarded. It doesn't work that way. First of all, if you rely on other people to tell your story, they may tell it, but they often won't tell it correctly. Who knows you and your work and your career the best? You do. You want to be in the driver's seat of your career and in order to do that, you want to be the one telling your story. You don't want to delegate that to someone else. The other thing that can often happen when we allow someone else to be our self-promotion is that people will often take credit for things that you did. They might not even need to, but it sort of just slips and oops. Next thing you know, you were a participant in something that perhaps you were actually the leader on. So again, if you want to be in the driver's seat and really be in control of your career path, we can't, this is not something we can delegate to other people. We need to be the voice of our own stories. Another myth that people often buy into, see if this one might resonate with you, is this idea that more is better. I'm going to tell everything about myself. Somebody walks up to me and says, you know, tell me a little about yourself. Five minutes later, still going. We've all met that person, right, at a cocktail party, and you ask them one question about themselves or what they do, and they go on and on and on and on. The introduction I did for you was actually about a minute and a half. A minute and a half is a long time. When someone asks you at a cocktail party or a networking event, who you are and what you do, trust me, you do not want to talk for a minute and a half. <laughs> so I did that on purpose, and there was a reason for it in this context. But more is not better. You want to be very selective about what you say and to whom you say it. So that's a mindset again. You don't have to tell this person everything in the first moment. You want to establish some credibility and create enough curiosity to continue the conversation. Because at the end of the day, this is all about relationship building and continuing the conversation on an ongoing basis. And finally, my favorite and the umbrella for all of this, it's just not nice to self-promote. Probably on some level, we have all bought into this one. Now, I'm from the South. And in the South, this is particularly true. And I've done some work with folks from other cultures. And certainly, in many cultures around the globe, this is really taught that it just isn't nice. But I can remember being a kid and getting 100 on a test and going home and being so excited. And I'm waving the paper in the kitchen and showing my mom that I got 100 on a test. And what I remember is her saying something like, Oh, honey, that's nice. That's really good. But, you know, that waving the paper and yelling about how you got 100, just don't do that at school because you might make other people feel bad. That's not nice. So somewhere in most of our lives, at some point, we've been told, don't talk about yourself too much, don't promote yourself too much, and certainly don't brag on yourself because it's just not nice. So hopefully... As I'm talking about these, some of these are resonating with you. Or maybe I should say hopefully none of them are resonating with you, in which case 
We're just missed. You're all perfect self-promoters. Most likely, though, one or more of these is at least a piece of what holds you back from effectively self-promoting. So, given that these are some of the myths and the mindsets that people hold, um, it seems like a really good time to share a quick story with you. I was talking with uh, William Wright Swaddell, who some of you may know is the director of the Career Center, the Undergraduate Career Center at Duke. And we were talking some time ago about self-promotion. And one of the things that he said that he had noticed in students, as he would speak to students, is that a student would come in, and that student had applied for a particular job. And he'd say, so John, tell me, you know, you applied for this job. What makes you think you would be good at this job? And typically, the student, John, kind of look at his shoes, you know, maybe look up in the air for a minute, and say something like, well, you know, the job is in Kansas City, and I'm from Kansas City, and I'm an English major, and you know, I think the job requires some writing, and so I thought maybe it would be okay, of a, you know, kind of a good fit for me. Great. I'm enthusiastic to promote you for this job. But then he said he would ask that student about a friend of theirs. So John, I see that your friend Ethan has applied for this particular job over here. Tell me a little bit about Ethan. Why is Ethan going to be a good fit for this job? And suddenly John comes alive. He's animated. He's excited. Oh my gosh, let me tell you about John. You know, he is going to be uh, about Ethan. He's going to be great for this job. He's a leader. He's a writer. He's been in this and that. He's got a great sense of humor. People just want to be around him. And he goes on and on and on, again, with a lot of passion and enthusiasm. And what Bill said to me was, what we need to do is learn to do this for ourselves. We all know how to do this for our best friend, right? If I asked any of you right now to tell me about your best friend, there would be passion. There'd be enthusiasm. You could go on and on about how great this particular person is. But we can't do it typically for ourselves, and that's what we need to learn to do. He said that we all have room to turn up the volume on our self-promotion. So if we think about self-promotion kind of on a scale, so if over here on the scale is zero, you're flatlining, there's no self-promotion going on at all, and over here, I can't make my arm go all the way over here, but over here is a 10. And a 10 is this great self-promoter, somebody who's really great at talking about themselves very authentically, very well, and they have that proper balance. Somewhere way down here is that 12, that person that none of us wants to be. And what we typically do is we keep ourselves at around a two or a three because we're so terrified of becoming the 12. So there's a lot of space between a two and, or a three and a 10. So I wanna allow each of you to experience that and illustrate it to yourselves. So in just a moment, not yet, I'm gonna ask everybody to stand up I'm going to ask you to pair up with someone, preferably someone that you do not already know outside of this room. And I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself to that person in your best, I'm at a networking event, which you are, <laughs> persona. So I don't have to set much context for you. And you're gonna have 20 seconds to Say something about yourself in an effort to establish some credibility and create some curiosity. And then we're going to switch. But before we switch, the person that you have introduced yourself to is going to give you a score on the scale of 0 to 10. They don't have to say anything. We're not asking for a critique here. If you're the one listening to the introduction, when I call time, all you need to do is, with a show of fingers, give them anything between a 0 and a 10. Okay, very simple. <laughs> Questions before we start. All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask you to fairly quietly find somebody, so especially since I don't have a mic, I'm going to have a hard time getting, getting back with you. But I'm going to ask you to stand up, find somebody, and then pause, and I'm going to give you 
one more instruction that's going to be important, which is who in your pairing is going to go first. You'll want to know that. So stand up, find somebody, and then bring your attention back to me. yell it as loud as I can and know that 20 seconds is going to go by fast. So, you may begin. You know, I wish I could do that. Or they did a really good job telling me about themselves. It was comfortable, it was easy, it was good. What were some of the things that made that person an effective self promoter? What did you notice? Yes. They're friendly and relaxed. Mm -hmm. Friendly and relaxed, yes. Yeah, so that made, made you comfortable because they seemed comfortable. Right. Yep, great. Yes. Very tone. 
their tone. Say a little more about that. So, so their tone of voice was kind of even, so that it didn't seem like they were boasting. Ah, yeah. So they weren't doing the like, oh, I'm so great because. <laughs> yeah, good. What else? Yes. They were talking about positive things. Positive mm -hmm. things, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Lots of humor. Lots of humor. Yep. Yeah. And that's always, again, it's, it's a showing that they feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. They knew their own story. They didn't stammer through their own story. Right. So they, they knew it. They were comfortable with it. Maybe they were prepared in some way. Yep. Yes, in the back. He's telling what I'm like to hear. Say again? I'm, he's telling me exactly what I like to hear. Ah, yeah. So anticipated what it is that you would want to know about. Definitely. Yeah. You had something? It's sort of authentic. The conversation seems to naturally go to their strengths. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they were good. <laughs> yes. Um, they use words effectively. They don't ramble on about themselves. So concise. They kind of got to the point. Yeah. Yeah. So these are some of the things that, that make someone an effective self-promoter. And, and you guys have named a number of the things that I want us to talk about briefly here tonight because they're very important. I have sort of distilled a list that I think are the, the key four. Yes, sir. You made a comment that struck me. You said, tell me about yourself, but most people tell you about what they do. Is that the same thing, so I understand? It, it can be, and it doesn't have to be. Yeah. And, and you're right. A lot of people start with what they do. Um, and sometimes that's <coughs> where you want to be because of how what your context is. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. And sometimes that's not where you want to be because of your context. Yeah, good question. So I've kind of distilled what I think are sort of the top four things that really make someone more effective as a self-promoter, the four things that I think are the keys. And the first one, for me, is authenticity. And this is, this is number one, and it's really the, the big bucket. A lot falls in here. If you are authentic in the way that you tell your story, if you're you, and you bring your personality and your sense of humor and your way of being, it will be comfortable for you, it will be comfortable for the other person, and it gives so much more opportunity for connection, which ultimately is the goal of all of these interactions that we're talking about. So authenticity is critically important. Uh, how many people here, just you know, raise your hand if this resonates with you, you've been to a networking event or some kind of an event and you've met somebody and you can tell that they have their networking persona on and they're like, hey, it's good to meet you. I want to give you their card and it's just all very fake. There's no authenticity and so it's impossible to make a connection with that person. It's like meeting the cardboard cutout version of the person. And if we don't bring our full, true selves to our interactions, then we're not going to make the kinds of connections that really allow us to effectively self-promote. So authenticity is very, very important. And I want to make a quick distinction here because this comes up a lot in conversation about self-promotion. A lot of people tell me sort of as pushback, well, I don't want to self-promote because that's like selling. And they kind of wrinkle up their face and, you know, they have some kind of negative connotation around selling. I don't think of this as selling. I think of this as telling. And there's a big distinction, in my mind anyway, between telling and selling. And it helps me to think of it this way. It may help you. Telling is about letting people know who you are, what you do, and how you are different at what you do than somebody else. You're informing them so that they can make a decision about whether you are the right person for the job, for the role, to, to represent them, to work with them. Whereas selling to me connotes maybe you're trying to push something on to them, force them to do something that maybe they don't want to do. And we're really about telling when we're self-promoting. We're telling a story. We're giving the other person information so that they're in a position to make a decision about us. We can't be hired. We can't be promoted 
if we are unknown? I'll tell you a quick story because it sort of illustrates this point about being being known. I have a, uh, a former client, and um, she was a paralegal in a small law firm. And over time, she decided that she really wanted to be the office manager. And lo and behold, she got this promotion to office manager. And she was dynamite as the office manager. She was putting out fires right and left. She was resolving human resources problems, people about to quit, and she's talking them off the ledge. She's making sure that furniture is getting delivered and the, the build out is going well. She's making sure that invoicing is happening, taking care of everything. So she does the job for a while and it's time for her performance review. And she goes into the managing partner's office and she's known him forever. She sits down across from him. She's ready. She's thinking, this is gonna really rock. I've done a great job. And he looks at her and he says, I really do not even know how to review you because I have no idea what you've been doing. Mm -hmm. huh. Scary. So she'd done such an effective job of keeping things from coming to his attention, putting out all the fires, but she never told him what she was doing. So that's an extreme example, but we're all often guilty of this, not letting people know what we do. So it's about telling. And, and I go back to that because again, telling and telling a story is really what authentic self-promotion is all about. So authenticity, the number one thing, that if you are your authentic self, you'll be able to make the kind of connections and create the kind of interest in those around you so that you have the opportunity to effectively promote yourself. The second key is preparation. And this one I cannot overstate the importance of. <coughs> Self-promotion is not something that comes to most of us easily or naturally, as we've said. So if we are not prepared, when the opportunity comes up, we are not going to be ready. I'll tell you another quick story of a, of a client of mine who, before we started working together, he told me that he had had the opportunity, unusual in his situation, to be in the elevator with the CEO of his organization. He works for an extremely large international company. And there was a conference, and he steps into the elevator, and there's the CEO. What does he say? Something completely inane, like, oh, how about the weather today? I mean, he said he had no idea what to say. It was one of those moments that, of course, the CEO gets off the elevator in the hotel, doors close again, and he's like, oh my gosh, this was my moment. And he had been working on an extremely important high-profile project that actually would have been interesting to the CEO, but because he was not prepared, he had nothing to say. So we talked about that for a while, and you know, he said, ah, oh, the likelihood that I'm ever going to run into him again is pretty slim. But I really do want to be prepared. So we talked about it, got him prepared. Well, shockingly enough, he had another opportunity. He was at another big conference for the company, and he ran into the CEO in the hall. And this time, he was prepared. He had something to say, short, very pithy, very concise, about what he'd been working on. And it just planted that tiny seed, made him a known quantity to the CEO of his huge organization. So very important that we're prepared because we never know when these opportunities might come up. Equally important that we be prepared because as somebody in here said, this is not a one size fits all exercise. We need to know who our audience is. Who are we talking to when we're promoting ourselves? Are we talking to a highly sophisticated person who might be our next boss or client? Are we talking to somebody that we've just met and we don't know what they know about us or our industry? How do we talk about what it is that we do? I work with a lot of lawyers and lawyers are notorious, and many other industries do the same thing, talking in the code that only the people in the industry understand. I used to practice law and I practiced intellectual property law. And I can't tell you the number of times I said the words intellectual property and people asked me something about real estate. And for those of you who know, intellectual <laughs> property are not the same. But there are countless different things, different industries, 
where we use our own lingo, our own jargon, and that isn't right for everybody. It is if you're talking to somebody who knows your field. So you want to know who's your audience, who am I talking to, what is it that I want from them, what's the opportunity here, and how sophisticated are they, how much do they know about me and what I do. We also want to be prepared to think about the different contexts for self-promotion. It's very different to talk about what you've accomplished and achieved if you're in a context where you've been asked to do that, like in a performance review, or where you know that the whole point of being there is to do that because you're at a networking event and we're going to go around the table and each person is supposed to introduce themselves and tell who they are and what they do. You've been given the code for how to do it. Very different from walking up to somebody at a neighborhood barbecue and they say, hey, how's it going? What do you do? Very different. You don't want to necessarily answer the same way. And we are promoting ourselves all the time, whether we know it or not. When you leave a voicemail message, it's a part of your brand. It's a part of self-promotion. When you answer an email that asks about what you do, or if someone introduces you to someone via email, and then you add to that, you are adding to your brand, either positively or negatively, and it's an opportunity for self-promotion. So we need to prepare and know our audience and our context. And I would suggest to you that this is not something that you can simply decide, I've thought about, therefore I'm ready. You may want to script some of this. <coughs> and if you're like me, the way I write and the way I talk are not the same. So I can write something really eloquent and beautiful and then if I try to say it, it's just not going to come out well. It will not come out comfortably and authentically for me. So I may have to think about it, write it out, and then revise it based on how it would naturally come out of my mouth. How would I say this if I were actually talking to somebody? <clears throat> so preparation is very important. And I know that all of you spend time preparing for the important things in your lives and in your careers. This is one of those things, very important to spend the time and energy on. Third key to effective self-promotion is something that one of you pointed out, which is positivity. This is an opportunity to be positive, to talk positively about yourself, about what you've accomplished, about what you bring to the table. It is not an arena in which you want to make comparisons to others or put other people down. It's not a better than or a superior to. It's about focusing on you and what you uniquely bring to the table. So the focus is very much on you and not on comparing. And finally, honesty. When you are talking about yourself, and I probably don't really have to say this, but you want to be 100% honest. If you were part of a team that achieved something, you want to 100% own your contribution and you want to make sure that it's clear it was a team effort. What we typically do is fall all the way on one side or the other, is we either take very little credit, oh, it was a team effort, or we sort of take all the credit and don't really mention that there was a whole team involved. So again, there's a, there's a balance here. But I can promise you that if you don't strike the right balance, it will come back to bite you. So you definitely want to be honest and own the part that is yours to own and then give credit where credit is due. So those are the four keys to effective self-promotion. <clears throat> and one of the things that I've learned, I've been an entrepreneur for a long time, and one of the things that I have, have figured out over time is that this is an art and not a science. And all of us, have a brand. We have something that we are promoting to others. That's ourselves. So even if you are not an entrepreneur, you need to adopt an entrepreneur's mindset about how you go about doing what you do. So if you have an entrepreneur's mindset, you also want to then be thinking about how to advertise yourself. And what advertisers know is 
that they want to appeal to your emotion. That's what commercials do, right? They try to appeal to our emotions. So if I said to you that I wanted to um, promote something to you, and I showed you something that looked like this, how interested would you be? <laughs> Not very, I don't think, at least initially. These are standard features for an automobile. And I would bet that I would get your attention a whole lot faster if I showed you this. It's red. It looks like it might be moving at a rapid rate of speed. It's much more interesting. We all need to be full color animated commercials for ourselves. Because if we can catch people's attention, then we have the opportunity to share more about ourselves. If somebody is willing to listen, then you'll have the opportunity to tell them the details. So we want to establish some credibility and then create enough curiosity to continue the conversation. And then we can get into more detail. So how do you know what the details are? You have to do some self-reflection. Now, self-reflection is not something that most of us were taught much about or that many people do a whole lot of. We live in a very doing, action-oriented culture. But we're going to take a few minutes tonight and start to do a little bit of self-reflection, just kind of touch the surface, because I believe that without that, you won't know what it is that you want to be talking about when you are self-promoting. So the first thing that you want to be thinking about is your strengths. What are those things that make you, you? What do you bring to the table that maybe other people do not? What I've learned over time is that most of us devalue our own strengths. <coughs> I hear from people a lot. Oh yeah, I'm good at that, but isn't everybody? No, not everybody is. We each have unique strengths, and those are what differentiates us. So I'm going to ask you to take a moment, you've got a place on your handouts right now, to jot down your top five strengths, five things that you are particularly good at. Easy or hard? Hard. Yeah, I hear that a lot. So um, most people have an easier time coming up with what they think are their weaknesses than their strengths. And I will tell you, if you were an individual coaching client of mine, you'd be coming up with 10 of these, not five. So for extra credit later, if you want to add five more, you're welcome to. And I will tell you that one of the, one of the ways to make this a little bit easier is to add the phrase, at my best. I am. Because what often happens, at least it happens to me, is that I'll think of something and I'll think, oh yeah, that's a strength of mine. And then what immediately pops into my head after that is the one time, or maybe multiple times, when I wasn't that. Because we're never that all the time. So add that little phrase, at my best. If you are still having trouble coming up with strengths, you will want to think about what you are complimented for most often. And I will tell you that being complimented and receiving, truly receiving a compliment is very similar to being an effective self-promoter. 
People who are good at receiving compliments are typically better at promoting themselves. Now, when you get a compliment, what do you do? Say thank you. <laughs> Say thank you. And then what else do you sometimes do? Compliment them back. You might compliment them back. What else? Say, oh, no, I didn't earlier. Yeah. yeah we sort of give it back, don't we? We like sort of devalue what they've said by saying, oh, no, it was nothing, or oh, that old <coughs> thing. And if you practice simply saying thank you and then shutting your mouth and really just sitting with the compliment, I promise you it will improve your ability to be a, self, a more effective self-promoter, too. It's the same muscle. You're building that muscle of being able to own what is true about yourself and what you bring to the table. So practice just saying thank you. In fact, when we go out these doors and do some more networking, if somebody gives you a compliment, say thank you and stop. Practice it. So these strengths are important, and my suggestion to you would be that with the five that you have or the ten that you come up with, that you'll want to have an example or a story for each one. Because many people in here might write the same word on the piece of paper. I've often had people say, oh, I'm very detail-oriented. Great. What does that mean? What does that look like for you in your field? If you are promoting yourself to a client or a prospective client, how does detail orientation translate into value for that person? If you're trying to let your boss know why it is that you should get a promotion, how does being detail-oriented play out in your workplace? Think of a situation where being detail-oriented was beneficial. And I think of them sort of like little mini-movies that then I can call up any time. And that way, I can tell the story quickly and easily, and I'm not caught on the spot going, ugh, detail-oriented, okay, yeah, I'm sure I was that once. I can't remember when that was or what it was. You'll just know. And it allows you to be more free-flowing and comfortable as you tell your story. So strengths are the first piece of self-reflection. <laughs> the second is to know what you've accomplished. So everybody here is an accomplished person. I know this. And what I also know is that high-achieving, accomplished people typically do not value their accomplishments. We accomplish something, and we check the box, and we move right on to whatever's next. And there's always something else that we want to achieve. So it's, it's never like, wow, I achieved that. It's like, okay, yep, got it, move on. We are accomplishing things all the time, big things and small. And it's very important to take note of these and to be able to talk about them in a way that's comfortable and natural. So I'm going to give you a moment to think about three accomplishments that you have had in the last year, big or small, personal or professional. And I want you to jot down those right now. everybody has at least one accomplishment jotted down. And this is a self-promotion workshop. So I am about to give each and every one of you a chance to show your self-promotion savvy. Is there anyone, and I'm sure there's at least one brave soul, who would like to stand up and share one of your accomplishments with the room? If you do, you can stand up, introduce yourself, share your accomplishment, and here's what's going to happen. The rest of us are simply going to congratulate you and clap for you. <laughs> and if you are listening to the accomplishment, here's what you should be doing. You should be not 
judging the person's accomplishment or judging your own accomplishments compared to the accomplishment that you just heard. Yeah, a lot of laughing because we all do that, don't we? Like, oh, now I can't stand up because theirs was really good. Oh, really good. So, anybody who would like to share an accomplishment? Oh, and I have one more rule. Yes, you, you will absolutely be first. The, the one more rule is an easy one. You have to own it fully, no qualifying. So, state it like it is. Stand up, would you? Okay. Thank you. Um, hi, I'm Dina, Dina Barrel. And um, this year, uh, I, in, or the, in, within the last 12 months, I created uh, my own website. And I, it came out beautifully. I'm very proud of it. Um, it's, I'm, uh, I own an interior design firm. And um, I'm really, really excited about the site and um, all the work I've been doing. Thank Congratulations. you. I'm Ram Marapali, I'm an entrepreneur. One of my company really went large contracts. I'm truly become a billionaire. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yes. I'm Melody Feather, and after 30 years of not being in school, I took an online course to get a certificate in event planning, and am looking after my kids leave the nest to head out into that career. Sandy Bogart Wernis, and several months ago, which is during this past year, I assumed control of a nonprofit. It has been in my family for many decades, and uh, I am I have solved quite a few problems already. Yes. <laughs> I helped my office finalize the guidance for closing out grants, and I helped the first of my grantees close out its grant. All right, one more. Yes. Hi, my name's Ala Rogers. Just when I thought I would be retiring, I made uh, decisions to uh, strategically change my career path and have done that this year. And what's your career path now? My career path now is I am an art dealer who is now becoming an art consultant, consulting uh, design firms, including and especially giving priority to the one I'm a principal in, Dina Verrill Interiors. Congratulations. <laughs> unfortunately, don't have time to keep going. And for those of you who, who had your hand up and were, were willing, we would have, I'm sure, benefited from hearing yours as you would have benefited from sharing. What I want you to think about, if you did not have your hand up, is what was going on inside your head that stopped you from raising your hand. Whatever that was, that's what's stopping you from being an effective self-promoter. And if you remember, I said at the beginning, we all have these mindsets that we hold. And if we're conscious of the mindset, we can work around it. If we're not conscious of it, it's a roadblock that's invisible to us. So you just got yours to come visible. Think about what was going on inside your head. What were you hearing? And whatever that was, if it was, oh, that would be uncomfortable, I don't want to do it, people will look at me, mine is not good enough, whatever it was, that's your roadblock. So I just want you to, to be aware, if you were not planning to stand up, there, there's your roadblock. So the third thing, when we talk about self-reflection, that you're going to want to be thinking about is what you love about what you do. What are you engaged in about what you do? A lot of people don't say, I love what I do. Maybe it's something you like about what you do. Maybe it's something that juices you up about what you do something that really engages you. What do you bring to your clients that's exciting or interesting? What is it that keeps you doing what you do? If you cannot answer this question, we have a different conversation we could have. <laughs> <laughs> but I want you to take a minute and just jot down a couple of points
points about what it is that you enjoy or love about what you do. So we've talked a little bit about strengths, we've talked about knowing your accomplishments, and we've talked about this idea of what you enjoy about what you do. And, and this whole idea of enjoying what you do, it's, it's very attractive to other people. So when you bring that to your self-promotion, it helps bring people in to you. We all like doing business with someone who enjoys doing what they do. It's just attractive and appealing. If someone is energized and excited about what they do, we tend to get excited too. And as somebody said to me the other day, you know, if, if, if the person I'm talking to can't even get excited to tell me about what they do, then I'm sure not going to be excited <laughs> about what they do. So these are our pieces of self-reflection, and this is just the beginning of the information that you probably want to be thinking about. Peggy Klaus has a questionnaire called the Take 12 Questionnaire. Um, at her site, bragbetter.com, that asks you a whole bunch more questions that you may want to answer as you think about self-promotion. But I think these are at the core. And once you've gathered this information, the next question you might be asking yourself is, when do I use it? And we've really touched on this, but I'll run back to it really quickly. You want to be ready to self-promote, obviously, if you're job hunting and you're engaged in interviews. As many of you know, the hot way to interview these days is with behavioral interview questions. People will ask you, tell me about a time when. Give me an example of a time when. And that's where those stories come into play. So if you know your strengths and you have the example or the story, that mini movie, you'll be ready. If you know your accomplishments, you'll be ready. So job hunting and interviews. The second area where you want to be self-promoting is what I call internal brand building. If you are currently in a job, any job, and there is anyone who is your boss, anyone above you in the organization, you will want to make sure that you are letting them know who you are, what you do, and what you bring to the table. The players change. What people know is transient. It's all about what are you doing for me right now. So making sure that people are up to date and informed about what you're doing. And the third arena for self-promotion is networking and client development. Many of you probably need clients in order to continue to do what it is that you do. And when we go out and we network and we try to enroll new clients or we make a pitch, those are the important times to self-promote. There are other people, I am sure, who do things that are similar, if not identical, to what you do. And the reason someone would hire you, as opposed to someone else, is because you will have differentiated yourself by sharing what you bring to the table that makes you unique. So these are sort of the broad venues. I want to bring this back to each of you right now as we start to wrap up. I want you to think a little bit about your goals for the next 12 months in your career. What are your goals for the next 12 months? Then once you've done that, and I'll give you time to write in just a minute, in addition to your goals, I want you to be thinking about the people whose radar you need to be on to achieve those goals. As much as it would be great if we could achieve our goals all on our own, I'm quite sure that all of you have career goals that will require someone else to be informed about who you are and what you do. We have to get on the radar of other people in order to achieve our career goals. And finally, what are some of the specific concrete actions that you will need to take to get on the radar of those people who can help you reach your goals? 
So I'm going to give you a couple of minutes and I want you to think about these three topics and jot down some notes if you would about your goals, the people, and the actions you can take to get on their radar. As a coach, one of the things that I know is that we may think a lot about the goals that we have and the actions that we're going to take, but unless we have accountability in some way, it is far less likely that we will actually follow through on the actions that we say we're going to commit to. You'll walk out the door of this room and there are lots of other things that might distract you from what you've just written down. So I would suggest to each of you that you consider who can be your accountability for getting on these people's radar. An accountability partner could be somebody in this room, could be a friend, a mentor, a coach, someone who can help you follow through on these goals. And as importantly, if not more importantly, someone who can help you hone your self-promotion skills. So remember how when we paired up at the beginning and you gave somebody the show of fingers how they did on their self-promotion. As you start to think about your self-promotion and how to amp it up and turn up the volume, it's going to be important to get some feedback from somebody else. How are you doing? Are you still down here at a 2? Have you hit a 10 plus? How, what can you add? Where can you amp it up? Where can you turn up the volume? I know for me, very often I'll think I'm really over the top and I'll share it with somebody and they'll say, oh, are you kidding me? You've still got lots of space. Because again, I, I'm in the same mode we all are thinking that I've reached that limit and we can't tell that for ourselves. So I encourage you to get some accountability. I also want to challenge you to get some accountability here tonight. You have an opportunity when we open up these doors and you go back out into networking time to walk up to somebody that you do not know, give them your best self-promotion pitch, and ask them how you did. Everybody's heard the same message. It's a safe place to try it out. So I encourage you to do that. Um, get some feedback from other people here. Was it, was it a 2? Was it a 5? Was it a 10? Was it a 12? And you guys give each other some honest feedback. So before we wrap up, I just want to run through a couple of things to remind you of what is really important as you walk out the door. So to be an effective self-promoter, you want to be passionate and energetic. We talked about how it's much more enrolling and engaging to do business with someone who's passionate. I also want to throw up a little yellow caution flag here because passion doesn't look the same on everybody. So as you probably can figure out about me already, Passion for me is probably bigger, louder, and more moving of my hands. But that's not true for everybody. 
Passion for some people can be a real depth of knowledge of a subject. Sometimes it can be just a look in someone's eyes. You can just feel that they have that commitment and that passion. So bring your passion and your energy, but bring it in the way that is real and authentic for you. You also want to know your audience. Think ahead about where am I likely to need to promote myself and who is that audience. What kind of audience is it and what's going to be most important for them to know about me? We don't want to fall into the more is better. You want to be concise and succinct. You want to be sincere. This goes back to the authenticity piece and it makes it more comfortable for you and it really makes it a lot more comfortable for your audience. Keep your stories fresh. This is important. Because especially if you're someone who's out networking and talking to people either to look for a job or because you're developing clients, you don't want to be telling the same stories over and over again. So keep thinking about, what have I accomplished lately? What's the latest thing I can add as I talk with people? What have I been complimented for lately so I have a new strength that I can be thinking about and talking about? So keep it fresh. You want to be well prepared, and as I said, this can't be overstated. Be ready. It can happen at any time. You may have the opportunity, and you want to make sure that you have prepared so that you can capitalize on the opportunities when they arise. And finally, show your personalities. There are other people who do what you do, but there's nobody who does it the way you do it. Every single person in this room has a unique personality. And within the bounds of professionalism, if we show our personalities, it makes us more attractive and appealing to other people to engage in relationship building with us. And in the end, as I said, that's really the goal of all of this, is to create that conversation and that dialogue that will allow you more opportunity for people to know who you are and what you bring to the table. So I'm going to turn this over now to Nicole. She's got a couple of things to share with you, and then you'll have an opportunity to practice your self-promotion with each other. Hi, everybody. Um, I hope you enjoyed the program tonight. Uh, my name is Nicole Kempton. I'm here from um, Pugwa. I actually came up this morning and we'll be heading home tomorrow, but um, I'd love to, to talk to any of the few people in the room afterwards in the networking reception and um, anyone else who's here as well. I'm, I'm a Trinity alum myself, but um, I just wanted to give you a heads up on a couple of upcoming events. Um, next week, there is a veritable smorgasbord of, uh, of Duke events in DC. Um, Tuesday, November 12th, there's an event on uh, getting to the C-suite, um, very important for a lot of us. And um, that's going to be 6 to 8.30, and it's in Northwest DC. There's details on the Duke DC website. And then um, the very next day, on Wednesday, the 13th, there's the Duke Gen um, multi-city networking event, um, and the details for that are at um, the Duke Gen website, which I believe is dukegen.org. So I um, hope to see any or all of you at those two events. So thank you once again for, for coming out tonight. Thank you.